Hello everyone and welcome back. Now these couple, these next couple videos are going to be a little bit weird because I actually lost the audio for these clips. So I'm going to be dubbing back over and kind of explaining what we're, what I'm doing. So anyways, in this one we're going to be adding the molding to our window. And as you can see, we added the Boolean, Boolean modifier last time to kind of create a temporary hole for us to uh, put our molding in. So yeah, so what we're going to do here today is we actually are just going to drop in a primitive. Um, in this case, it's just going to be a cube. And then we're going to kind of um, extrude out that uh, mold that we had um, in the reference picture. So as you can see, I'm pulling it up right here. So it basically just looks like a cross with an extruded center. So it's not going to be very complicated to model. Um, and since I'm doing this voiceover, it's going to be easier for me to think, you know, since I don't have to actually be uh, using these hotkeys and such. So anyways, um, what we're going to have to do here is we're going to drop in a cube. So hit Shift A and then go ahead and click on cube. We're going to drop the cube into our scene and all we're going to do is we're going to drag it on over to our window using those arrows. And again, if, you can't, if your arrows aren't popping up, it's on the left hand side of the screen, the little arrow icon. Um, and then we're going to go into the front facing view by hitting the red dot and we're going to drop into edit mode. We're going to move our cube, or we're still in object mode, um, but we're going to center our cube a bit more with those arrows. Um, so basically we want it to wrap around this window here um, and it's going to be pretty easy to do. Um, basically we're just going to scale it up a bit and then we're going to add some loop cuts and extrude the geometry. Um, so we're going to tab into edit mode, and we're going to hit S and Z and lock it on the Z-axis. And we're going to give it a bit of height. Um, in this case, we're actually going to vertex mode, actually. Um, yeah, if I remember correctly, I wanted to get more of a fine adjustment. So we're going to make sure we're in wireframe, and we're going to box select the vertices, making sure we're in vertex select mode, dragging the top vertices all the way up. And then we're going to do that same thing for the bottom. Press B for box select and select all the vertices. We're going to drag them down. And we're going to go on the right side. B box select, drag it over. And then finally, we we'll drag over the left side too. So now, basically, all we've done is squared up our object um, in edit mode. And as you can see, I'm going to bump it up a bit so we can actually have some geometry sticking out of the wall, uh, making it look like actual molding. Um, and because this object isn't going to be um, seen from the back, what we're going to do is we're going to drop in a loop cut in the middle, and then we're going to just select these back faces, and um, we're going to select this back face and delete it by hitting X. First, we're going to shrink it in a bit. Um, and then we're going to hit X. Waiting for me to catch up here. <laughs> um, and we didn't actually drop a loop cut there, we just pushed it forward. Um, it would have been the same effect either either way. Um, so yep, X, and delete faces. So now the back face is missing, and we still have this front face, but now we need to punch a hole through it. Um, so we're going to go back into this front facing view, and we're going to hit Control r to create a loop cut, and then we're going to drag it over to the side. Um, and that's going to be our right edge for the molding. And then we're going to hit Control R again, click, drag to the left, and there's our second supporting edge, and this one's for the left, obviously. And then we're going to do the same for the top row and bottom row. Click and drag. Okay, so now you can see we have a box cut out in the center, and in that box we are actually going to delete it, and then we're going to, I believe, extrude the geometry out. Um, so we're going to go back into face select, we're going to select our um, object, we're going to hit X and delete faces, just deleting that front face, and you can see now we have that uh, kind of open border because it doesn't really, because we deleted the back earlier, so what we're going to do is we're going to go into edge select mode, we're going to hold down alt and click, selecting all the edges, then we're going to hit E, and then I'm gonna, I right clicked in this situation to um, keep the extrusion, but just keep it in place, and then I dragged it back a bit, so you can see now it actually looks like the moldings in the wall, even though from the behind it doesn't really have all that supporting geometry. Um, so now what we want to do is we're going to want to add that indent on the molding that is kind of looping around. And we're not going to go too in depth. Um, you could, if you wanted to make it a really detailed molding, you use a different method for this. That would be a lot easier. But basically, all we're going to do is we're going to add some more loop cuts and then we're going to extrude them inward. So. As you can see here, I am going to switch back over to that front view by clicking that, that red dot at the top right. 
and I'm going to hit Control R, and then I'm going to drop in an edge loop close to the side, pretty close to the side, but not like overlapping. I'm going to drop a top edge loop, and then one on the left, and then one on the bottom. And remember, just click to drop the edge loops after you're done sliding them. Okay, now we need to add another edge loop on each side so we can extrude it inwards. So I'm going back around doing the same thing, adding an edge loop on each side. Um, that way we're creating an extra face in between the edges that we can select. So now I'm in face select mode. I'm going to select all those in between faces that we just um, created. Excuse me. Um, so you can see just holding down shift and clicking, selecting every face. And it is a little tedious. You can't hold down alt because of the way the geometry flows. It won't actually move around. But um, as you can see, we have this face selected. Now we're going to press E. And then I right clicked there after pressing E to set them back to their original position and then I clicked on the arrow and dragged them inward a bit and you can see I'm kind of fine-tuning it right here um, making it in a position where it looks nice um, so I think that looks good it's not an amazing molding but for our situation it looks good enough and especially when we add a nice white texture to it it'll look perfectly fine um, so I'm pretty happy with that obviously it looks basic but with the method we went with um, we kind of had to go basic so now we're going to add that cross shape, as you can see that I just showed the reference picture. Um, my orientation is a little messed up. Um, so now we're going to add in another cube by holding down Shift, pressing A, and clicking on Cube under Meshes. Um, and we're going to just drag it up again with those arrows, making it look as center as possible. Again, it doesn't have to be exactly perfect, but we just want it to look nice. Um, and once we get in a nice spot, we're going to tab into edit mode and press S to scale it down. And then we are going to center it a bit more, making sure it looks nice and pretty. Um, and, this, and we're not actually going to be modeling the little handles and everything on the window. Um, you could if you want to, but in this case, this, it's, this series is already going on pretty long, so I'm trying to keep it down to basics. Um, Anyways, you can see I went to the side view to bump that a bit forward, so it's actually in the center. Um, then I tabbed into edit mode, and I hit S and X to scale on the X axis, making it a bit thinner. Um, and then we are going to switch to the front facing view. And what I'm going to do is we're going to be extruding this um, on every side. And you'll see that in a second. So I'm tabbing into edit mode going to vertex select because we only, only want to select the vertexes. We're going to go into wire, hit B, and box select just the top row, and then we're going to press E, right click to deselect, and then we're going to manually drag those up. And you can see we extrude it out, but we still have that center cube where we can uh, extrude it on every side to make that cross. So I'm just going to repeat this process for every side, selecting the vertices and then hitting E right clicking to deselect and just dragging it in, a, in the X, Y, and so forth. Um, so now you can see we have that cross shape that I was uh, looking to get. Um, we're not quite done with it yet. We want to add a little bit more geometry. Um, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to delete these side faces that are in the wall just to kind of help optimize the scene a bit better. It also helps with UV unwrapping. If you have something in the scene that's never rendered, you might as well just delete it. Um, so I deleted all those sides. Um, and I believe we are going to add those loop cuts. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a couple loop, cut, loop cuts by hitting Control R and then hitting the scroll wheel up to make it two loop cuts. And then what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to click and then right click so they don't move at all. And then we're going to repeat the process so that we also have some horizontal loop cuts. Um, now we're going to go into face select and select all these faces that are in the center and we're going to make that indent in the cross. I'm going to go in the side view, and I hit E, and then right-click to deselect, and I'm just dragging it forward for a bit more fine control. And you can see we have a nice cross shape. Um, and again, since the camera won't see the back of this cross, we can actually delete all these faces. Um, looking back at it now, I actually never deleted the faces of the actual wall, and that's something you can totally do. Um, it's going to save you more render time. Obviously, it's not going to be a significant amount because it's just a giant square. Actually, no, you can't. Never mind. Take I take back what I said. And remember, because we're using the boolean, we can't actually have a uh, open shape like that. We need a actual um, complete shape with depth. So you actually I, you can't do that unless you were to um, 
not use the boolean method in this case um, and you wanted to add some loop cuts delete the face like we did with the cabinet drawer but in this case we're just going to leave it as is but yeah so basically i selected all those back vertices on the cross and i deleted them um, by going into wireframe and doing a box select so pretty simple stuff um, and this is this also that if you wanted to add those little tidbits in you could um, it's basically just a lot of you know extruding, you know, maybe dropping a cube, and you can add a cylinder for the handle because you can see those crank handles on the bottom, um, and then you can apply it the metal texture that we're gonna use later on. I don't believe we we have not created it yet, but yeah, you can reuse some of the textures. It'd be it'd be very basic, but you know this video was already pushing ten minutes, so we wanted to speed it along. Um, we also don't use glass in this scenario, so you notice we're just making the border of the window because Blender doesn't play very well with glass windows sometimes. Um, what you can do some, um, you can tweak some settings so that light passes through normally, but the texture still shows up if you have like a like a fingerprint texture on the window, basically. But if you ever try to render um, like a like light shining in through the glass of a building uh, model like this, you'll notice it gets really noisy really quick. Um, and even with the setup I have, um, and when we render the final image, it's very noisy because of the, the lack of amount of light we have. Um, and that's even after we add an ex internal light. So yeah, so just kind of going back over our concepts. Um, in the next episode, I believe we uh, cut a hole in the wall for those soap bottles. Um, so that's going to be real nice. And uh, we also are going to be later on adding the shower butt base and the, the glass for the shower. Um, and also, obviously, the shower head. Um, so that's um, pretty much it for this video. Um, again, the next couple videos my voice um, overlaid over it because I lost the audio. But um, yeah, so thanks for watching. Um, if you have any other comments or concerns uh, in the comments, and I'll try to answer them all. Um, but yeah, that's it. Thanks for watching.